Hola, Cage Fighting Connoisseurs. This is Kid Nate coming back at you once again with the infamous and patented bathrobe review of UFC Fight Night 35, Rockhold versus Philippou. I'm almost thinking about giving up the numbering system he is doing with the UFC Fight Night. It's making a generic Fight Night product that's going to be out week in, week out on FX1, FS1. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's model in the old ESPN Fight Nights, uh, boxing matches that ran on Friday nights. Uh, this idea is just to supply people with a steady supply of, of MMA with up-and-coming fighters and, and old veterans. Um, shouldn't expect too much, shouldn't consider it, a, and, or really even to an old spike uh, fight night event because these are going to be coming out of so much more often. Perfectly entertaining uh, uh, presentation, I think, um, but not any of that big-time old UFC feel. It's just we're, we're adjusting to the new reality. And, and I think it's a good product, and, and I'm fine with it. I, I would give the event three stars, you know, uh, nothing super spectacular, but uh, perfect to the card. First up on the preliminary card in the UFC Fight Pass, by the way, I used a CVS uh, a temporary visa card uh, for that, so I'm not worried about any of the security issues. Um, first up, lightweight spin weld, Darius versus Charlie Brenneman. Darius won with a first round uh, rear naked choke. Uh, basically, totally dominated Brenneman. Bad matchup for Brenneman, who's uh, one of the wrestlers who likes to get the fight to the ground and then grapple. Well, Darius was a superior grappler coming from a BJJ background, and it turns out he was a superior striker too. And so he beat up uh, Brenneman on the feet and then uh, uh, quickly finished him on the ground when he was hurt. Pretty impressive important performance, Darius, in his UFC lightweight debut. <coughs> Earned another chance in the UFC. He got cut uh, uh, after a string of losses in the UFC, and then went out and won four straight outside the UFC, and is coming back. I look forward to seeing him again, but don't expect a great deal. I'd give this fight. Uh, I'd give this fight three and a half stars. Totally good fight. Up next, Vince Michelle versus Garrett Whiteley. Uh, I give it three stars. It, it went to a decision, kind of dragged a little. Good action. Michelle was very aggressive and pushing the action. Whiteley seemed pretty outclassed. Uh, uh, Pichel won every round on every card, 30-27 all the way across. And that brings us to the first uh, FS Fox Sports 1 fight, uh, flyweight Lewis Smolka versus Alp Tekinos Kilik. I'd give this one three and a half star. Very fun fight. Uh, back and forth, Smol Smolka uh, uh, kind of rode out the early storm from the uh, Oz Gillick, who, as we've seen before, is a pretty dominant wrestler. Smolka managed to fight that off, and by the end of it, he was just beating the crap out. Uh, split it two rounds to one, but uh, very dominant performance by Smolka. Look forward to seeing him again. I think he might be somebody who can make some waves in the flyweight division. Uh, up next, middleweights, Trevor Smith versus Brian Houston. Uh, Brian Houston, uh, who uh, was a short notice uh, guy coming in to the UFC in his last fight at 4-0, uh, he had more notice for this fight, but uh, he's still... You could tell he was pretty green. I, th I think athletically and as far as a lot of his raw fight skills, uh, he is a UFC caliber athlete. But it'll be interesting to see how that uh, retards his development as a as a top level fighter. Trevor Smith looked good though. I, I beating him, but I, I'd give this one three stars. Split decision fight. Um, a good back and forth, but nothing spectacular. Lightweight Elias Silverio defeated Isaac Valley Flag. Another. Three star fight. The fights by this point were starting to blend into one another. Uh, Valley Flag was an old Strike Force veteran. Never really uh, connected with me there, and and certainly didn't last night. Silverio looked Silverio looked very good in all aspects of the fighting and dominated uh, even uh, every round. Uh, he had a point deducted um, for uh, knee into the head of a down opponent, but he, he needed him in the chest pretty clearly. It was a bad call by the referee referee Grice. Um, so, you know, it is what it is, but uh, things are kind of blended together. And then uh, the next fight, uh, I'd give three and a half stars. Ramsey Nijem versus Justin Edwards. I need to apologize to Mr. Nijem because this is a very entertaining fight. I was, I was, I was talking to Mac about how it was not going to be a fun fight before. But Nigel really put on a show. He was, he was, uh, his striking was sharp. His grappling was good. Uh, he, he, he took the unanimous decision over Justin Edwards. I think Connor Rubish was totally right on our in-depth preview the MMA vivisection, we're going to be calling those, uh, pointing out that, that Justin Edwards being coached by the infamous George Urgell, 
you know, when you're coached by a guy with a bad fight IQ, those bad habits tend to trickle down. And, and Justin Edwards was trying submissions and things when he didn't need to be doing that. So interesting fight. Uh, good performance from Nigel. Look forward to seeing him again. And again, my apologies for saying that that fight would be boring. It was not. And that brings us to featherweight. Uh, Cole Miller versus Sam Cecilia. Just a ass whipping. I'd give this one four stars. I love Cole Miller. I'm a big Cole Miller fan. Sam Cecilia, uh, uh, his only shot was to get inside and outbox Miller. Miller fought long. He was he had that jab in Cecilia's face the whole time. Beat him up on the feet and then and then gave him a, a, a choke out when he was vulnerable. Really good fight. Really good performance from Cole Miller. And Cole Miller went over and 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 uh, got in Dana White's face about being a top ten featherweight after that. And then called out Donald Cerrone. Offered to pay for Mike Dolce's. Uh, fees to, to help Cerrone get down to 145. So interesting there. Up next, Flyweights, John Moraga versus Dustin Ortiz. I'd give this one two and a half stars. A little frustrated. Uh, a split decision win for Moraga, but he, he let Ortiz get way too into the fight, and Ortiz's strategy was, was laying prey. So it was not as fun as you'd think uh, a flyweight uh, about uh, with a slugger like Moraga should be. Moraga cracked him a few times, but just kind of fought Ortiz's fight and was lucky to get away with a win. Uh, personally, I scored it for Ortiz. Um, just how it goes. Uh, then up next, middleweights, uh, Yoel Romero versus Derek Brunson. I would call this one a five-star fight. I mean, this is a great fight. <laughs> Plus, it had the unique angle of Romero apparently pooping his drawers uh, during the bout and that being captured uh, and, and screen grabs and, and all of useless scum as the UFC flyweight was... Ulysses Gomez, who goes by the nickname Useless Gomez, uh, was tweeting that shit all over the internets last night, and uh, that stuff happens. It happens in wrestling. It happens in MMA. Uh, some people, Coach Mike Reardon, pointed out on the Bloody Elbow list that uh, you know frequently that's associated with using diuretics or laxatives to lose weight to make a weight cut, which Romero did. Now, I'm not casting aspersions. I'm just saying the guy crapped his pants. He either has poor self-control or maybe something else was involved. Anyway, the fight itself, Brunson, a, a Greg Jackson product, uh, uh, it was like watching a, a, a really good pitching team fight a really powerful hitting team. Romero's got a ton of offense. Brunson is more of a defensive fighter, and Brunson was able to, to control the tempo and the pace of the first two rounds, won those handily. Romero just came out and beat his ass in round three and got the TKO uh, in brutal fashion. Uh, really good performance from both men. Uh, a, a tough test for Yoel Romero, and I was impressed to see him pass. He is very much uh, similar to Hector Lombard, his fellow Olympian of judo, of uh, Cuban descent. Of course, Romero is a wrestler, and Lombard was an Olympic judoka. But uh, anyway, I, that'd be a fun match to see the two of those guys again. Um, and then Bantamweight, TJ Dillashaw beat Mike Easton. I'd give it a three-star fight. Pretty predictable. Dillashaw was just too much for Easton. Uh, just dominated every aspect of the fight. Put him down on the ground over and over again. Uh, outpointed him on the feet. Got the unanimous decision. Not much else to say. Uh, uh, here. Um, he's certainly not been the, the impact in the Bantamweight division that he had hoped to be and that some thought he would be. This is his third straight loss. It'll be very interesting to see if the UFC cuts him. Lloyd Irvin kept him in Maryland for his entire training camp and wouldn't let him go to the Alliance at all to train with uh, Dominic Cruz and Brandon Vera and those guys, and that certainly didn't help Easton's preparation for the fight. And Dillashaw, of course, was immaculately prepared by Dwayne Lowe guys at uh, Team Alpha Male. And then that brings us to middleweight Brad Tavares and Lawrence Larkin. I'd give this one three stars, a unanimous decision. Everything in this fight, dominated on the feet, uh, dominated on the ground, but wasn't wasn't really hurting Larkin, but just uh, uh, threw out more volume of punches. Larkin had just had a hard time pulling the trigger. Very frustrating performance. Larkin continues to be a guy, a guy I can't trust, as Eugene Robinson would say, a gicta. <coughs> I think he's a guy I can't trust anymore. And that brings us to the main event, Luke Rockhold versus Konstantinos Filippou. I'd give this one four stars. I mean, what more can you ask for in a fight? Uh, the only thing you'd ask for would be a dramatic swing. You just put a beating on Costa Filippou. <laughs> Showed you the difference between a kickboxer and a boxer. He used those kicks to just dominate him at range. Filippou was waiting to get a chance to, to land some punches, and it just didn't happen. And, the, you know, beat him with a liver kick. Brutal way to go out. But just an ass-whipping. And really, Rockhold sent a message to the middleweight division that, you know, look, 
I'm going to take on top guys and I'm going to destroy him. V Vitor Belfort may have destroyed me, but uh, that shit's rolling downhill and it's coming your way. And the, after the fight, he, he called out, uh, I don't see that happening. Vitor destroyed him pretty thoroughly. Uh, Vitor's going to be fighting for the title. So Rockhold, I think, is a few wins away from earning another shot at, uh, at Vitor Belfort. Friday the night was Yoel Romero versus Derek Brunson. Totally agree with that. Knockout of the night was Luke Rockhold. Hard to argue with that. And submission of the night was Cole Miller. Uh, uh, hard to argue with that. I mean, only two submissions on the card, and, and, and Miller was much the higher profile. Anyway, that's it for the bathroom review. Uh, remember to subscribe to MMA Nation on YouTube. Get all on Twitter. And follow my writing at bloodyelbow.com. Adios, MMA aficionados. We'll be back with full coverage of UFC 69. Eugene Robinson and Dallas Winston and I will be doing a three-way tet on Friday. Not sure what topics. We'll be looking back at this card and looking ahead to UFC 169 and probably talking some about uh, um, some of the other controversies going on in the sport today. So watch that on Friday. Adios, MMA aficionados.